Hey everyone, it's Blair here at Time Trades. Thanks for joining me this weekend. Today is Sunday, April 14th, and this is your weekly video. All right, so this is where we left things off last week, and uh, we're just going to review how our last forecast did. And we've got our uh, green target box here. On last week's video, we shifted this to the right forward a couple days. Um, so the target box uh, starts on Tuesday, ends on Thursday. And we just got a wick into the last part of the target box here on Thursday, on Thursday's pump um, uh, before Friday's dump. So um, by our standards, that's going to be an A for uh, uh, in reviewing this target box. Um, now, looking ahead, we've got a new target box down here. I, I'm going to review the logic behind why this is down here. Um, uh, and then uh, also, again, uh, a higher target box uh, into May. So um, so this was another very good forecast. We have we uh, last week we built we located this target box down here, May 17th, 18th, 19th. Really very little has changed, I think, um, to uh, update this target box. So basically, I'm going to leave this here. Um, it's focused on the uh, uh, lowest low here of the speed index, right? We've got the speed index bottoming on the 19th. And if we flip over to time trades, uh, you can see we also have, let's turn on uh, short-term waves, okay? So short-term waves shows um, the speed of geocentric mercury in yellow. We can see that's bottoming here April 15th. And we can also see that we've got pretty high probabilities of a pivot peaking April 17th, okay? So that's that's been a stable forecast for a while now. So um, the, the box starts at that peak in the machine learning pivot probability. Uh, I believe it's gonna be a low. Um, and the target box ends at the lowest low in the speed index here. Uh, and also we have mercury speed turning around, which is of course contributing to the uh, overall speed index going back up. All right, so um, it's kind of like a case of steady as she goes. Um, now, when we turn on the juice, um, this provides even more color and detail to the forecast. So um, in the past week, I or actually just yesterday, I think, or two days ago, I updated the time trades intraday script to add this new juice option here. So if you don't see this on your version of the script, please update your script. Um, the uh, instructions on how to do so are in the user guide. But uh, intraday juice is really, in my opinion, a massive game changer. And I think it's a, everyone listening to this video has a huge advantage in trading um, just by having this on your chart. I know it helped me immensely over the past week as I was testing this out. So um, when we turn on intraday juice, um, what we get, let's unhide that are two types of labels. We get uh, geocentric and heliocentric. Now geocentric is what is shown over here on the web application, okay? So if I turn on the juice here, what we're seeing is geocentric juice spikes, okay? And these are uh, areas of peak planetary alignment, all right? So we had one on April 11th, um, and that contributed to the big green bar. And then that um, backed off and is going to continue to back off until April 16th. Now, this is all great. This is in the time trades web application, but it's at a daily uh, time frame. Okay. So, what we don't have is exactly when on April 11th that, that, that peak in planetary alignment occurred. So, now we have that. We can go into um, an intraday time frame like 30 minutes here, and we can see intraday juice appear on the chart. So here we are, April 11th. 
when was that intraday juice spike? Well, um, there was one here on uh, April 10th. There's actually multiple. So this is another advantage of, uh, of, of the intraday approach is that what appears to be one juice spike on the daily level actually decomposes into multiple. So we had one on April 10th at the close. And you can see this lovely chair pattern or H pattern here. Um, the, we reached a, a, a juice inflection point and then pumped up on Thursday into another uh, juice peak on Thursday the 11th. That occurred late in the day at 11 p.m. Eastern time. Let me make sure I got the time zone set right. Yes, New York, 11 p.m. Eastern. Okay, and then after that, uh, we get the dump. So um, just an incredible addition to uh, your intraday charts for just precision trading. Um, I'm really excited about this. I hope you are as well. When it comes to heliocentric juice, um, I'm a little bit uh, more on the fence about how useful this is just in Scrolling back and taking a look at Helio juice in the past, it doesn't seem to be quite as effective as geocentric, um, but I'm going to leave it there for now, and maybe we can um, uh, discover some some excuse me some good trading patterns using that. All right, so we've got geocentric juice, we've got heliocentric juice, um, and we've got a declining speed index. And if we zoom out to the daily. Um, Everything kind of comes together uh, for a forecast low uh, in this target box Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because the speed index is reaching a low and we start to get some juice reappearing. We've got the Helio juice hitting April 17th. And then we have two geocentric juice spikes um, Friday and Monday, okay? And this is a big reason for this renewed geocentric juice spikes um, is a big reason for this higher high over here and also mercury accelerating out of, um, out of uh, negative speed. It's still gonna be in retrograde, mind you, but um, mercury, is, mercury speed is going to be increasing towards the positive end of the spectrum. Um, and that's, reflected in the speed index here. So uh, this is why we've got this high target box. Now, who knows where it lands price-wise, but um, based on the techniques that we've been using and the success that we've been having, it makes sense that this target box over here be a high. All right. So um, yeah, quick update on NQ. No change to this forecast. It's playing out well. Uh, it played out great last week, and intraday juice is um, just a huge game changer for uh, uh, tr personally my trading, and I hope uh, that you see the same thing in your trading. Okay, I'll be back shortly with a view to Bitcoin. All right, we're back looking at Bitcoin, and if you recall last week, you will remember the logic around drawing this target box was based on Mercury Helio 180. So if we look at the planetary lines configuration I've got here, it's scaled to 5625. And all I have is the nodes and Mercury Helio. And one of the things that um, I noticed is the pattern of price reaction with respect to Mercury Helio in Bitcoin. And the last time we, we hit Mercury Helio 180, which is where the lines cross here, but don't cross vertically. Vertically, of course, is Helio zero, right? So that's where the lines um, cross over from 360 to zero. This is 180 degrees. And you can see how elliptical Mercury is. This is a great visualization of how elliptical the orbit is because if it was perfectly circular, of course, the 180 degree point would be halfway between these vertical lines. And that's obviously not, okay? So anyways, 
all I did was super simple. Just look back, what happened the last time we were at Mercury Helio 180? Well, we had a top two days after um, Helio 180 and then a dump, right? And that was the basis of the forecast, nothing fancy. So over here, we had we had Mercury Helio 180 on April 6, top two days later, and then a dump. So right now we're just in the middle of a, of a routine dump, in my opinion, that is similar to what happened in January for a couple of weeks. And then the bull market resumed. So um, that's why I'm not, I'm not panicking on crypto um, because this, this is a similar pattern to what played out back in January, right? So I do think we are going to see a resumption of the bull trend. Right. And um, uh, this dump, if you measure it, right, let's go and do some, share some measurements that I took. And we can see just how routine this is. OK, so um, starting from back in January, we had our high January 11th. OK, uh, and then the low was 12 days later and about. 21% lower in price, okay? So here we are here in April, okay? We had the high on April 8th, okay? Two days after the uh, Helio, Mercury Helio 180. Um, and uh, if this extends for 12 days, then it's going to end on April 20th in about six days. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide my target box over here and I'm going to, well, let's give it one day of work. I'm going to land this on Friday the 19th. Okay. And I'm going to leave the right-hand side of our, the target box over here um, right around uh, the Mercury Earth 15 degree cycle. Okay. I'm not going to adjust the price because I think it, it includes, you know, potential for a lower price. It could go down here and, uh, probe, uh, a little bit lower on the, um, uh, on the, uh, node lines or even, uh, uh bounce off Mercury. Um, but that would still be in line with the percent sell-off that we saw in January, okay? So uh, that's my take on, on Bitcoin. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We can go over to time trades and take a look at what the machine learning is telling us here. So let's go here. We can take a look at BTC. Uh, and we've got a big move starting April 16th and low uh, or pivots um, in the 23rd, 24th area. So let's go and take a look at where that is. 23rd, 24th is within our target box over here. Um, and the big move on the 16th. So that's a five day move. So that would include, that would be counting backwards from the 11th, which is pretty much right in, um, it's not like two days after the high, but it's pretty close. Here's the 11th, okay. Uh, and the high was the eighth, so close enough. So the machine learning is saying there's a big move starting the 11th, ending the 16th. And uh, yeah, you don't have to be um, an AI to see a big move is happening right now. Okay, so um, again, another solid forecast, um, very simple when using the planetary lines um, and uh, combining it with the machine learning from time trades. Okay, we'll be back with gold. All right, we're back to wrap up this week's video with a quick look at gold here. So uh, one of the things I find interesting now with the uh, uh, ability to show the actual degrees of a planet on the data window. So this is coming from the planetary line script. Okay, so the planetary line script now shows the helio, geo, and synodic degrees in the data window, which is found over here. 
you can either see the object tree or the data window. So what's interesting is when you hover the mouse over um, February 14th, okay, um, then you see a bunch of values over here in the data window. And um, what I'm looking for is, is kind of interesting numbers, you know, like 144, 60, or 120. And one of the things that I notice right away at this low is Earth is at 144. Mercury is at 289, which is really close to 288. So when we use the ruler to project those values forward, we, we can anchor the ruler to February 14th and we get one and we enter 144 of both Mercury and Sun and also 144 of Mercury Earth synodic. Okay. Um, and this is this is what we get. Um, so we we get this little um, modest correction here right around the equinox just before the pump. And we've got another Mercury 144 coming up. Uh, on the 16th, okay? Um, so this this may be a high, it may be a low. Friday's bar was certainly very dramatic. Um, massive new high up here uh, as it wicked up and over the uh, uh, sun line, but it could not hold that level, sold off hard the rest of the day and came back down to rest in uh, on the earth line. Um, so, uh, this, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how to, how to read this going forward. Um, either option, um, with, uh, this being a high or this being a low is in play right now. Everything kind of depends on the price action over the next couple of days. Um, the other thing we see is time trades is forecasting a very high probability of a pivot 68% on April 17th. Okay, so that's just one day after this. Okay, after this uh, label, this Mercury 144 label. All right, so uh, there's going to be some very interesting days coming up on, uh, on gold. Um, uh, we could see a bit of a consolidation here before a resumption of the move up, or we could see, you know, like kind of a quick blow off top uh, and then a resumption of the, to the move down. And this is where combining um, the, the astrophysics methods that I talk about with price action is so, so important. So um, I think one thing that I'm going to be doing is uh, taking a look at gold and the juice um, indicator to see um, how that tends to react on it, to see if we can get a little bit more of an edge. But for now, um, uh, the best edge that um, I've got on my chart right now is this uh, planetary line scaled at 135 showing uh, sun and earth. Uh, these have done just a great job in uh, containing price and identifying key levels as we move move up. Um, my bias remains bullish um, in the long term, um, but we have crossed up and over this uh, white magic level. So we may end up with a, a retest here before we uh, resume up, uh, resume our move up. So uh, something to be aware of if we get cl a close and a separation below this earth line, it's, then I think it's something more than just um, a normal reaction. And we could end up coming back for a retest of this uh, white magic level at 2206. All right, so the next couple of days are really critical on gold. Watch for uh, 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 any uh, pivots in the price action, um, any sort of confirmation of the next uh, swing move here. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, thanks again for using time trades and we'll talk to you again next week. Bye now.